there. Are you finally starting to wake up, dear? Don't try to get up too quickly. The herbal tea I gave you takes a while to wear off. You're probably still a little lightheaded from it, so just take your time getting up. There's no rush. Where are you? <laughs> You're at my estate, silly. Don't you remember anything from last night? Not really. Well, what's the last thing you remember? Me buying you and getting into the carriage? So you don't remember anything else? Maybe the herbal tea I gave you was a little too strong. Do you remember anything else from last night, like eating dinner or maybe bathing? <laughs> that seems to have got your attention. Are you starting to call anything yet? You only remember eating dinner and that's it? Well, I guess that would make sense. The tea you had with your dinner was the same tea that put you to sleep on the carriage ride home. It works really well to help with stress relief and sleep, but it does make you groggy and sometimes makes you forget things if you drink too much of it. Or what happened after that? Well, you poor thing. You could hardly stand on your own. So I had no other choice than to have my maids help you into the bath and bathe you. I mean, after all, I couldn't let you go to sleep all dirty after spending all that time in a cage, could I? His face is turning red. It's so cute, I can't handle it. There's no need for you to be embarrassed. It's normal for maids to bath someone, whether they're sick or too tired to do it themselves. It's part of their job. After everything he's gone through, he's still innocent and bashful. I knew all the work I put into getting him was worth it. He really is one of a kind. Oh, sorry dear, what was I saying? Whose room is this? Well, obviously it's mine, sweetie. I couldn't let you sleep in the servant quarters. Those rooms are for people far below someone of your station. Where are your clothes? His face is so cute with embarrassment right now. He really is too precious for this world. I had my maids discard them. They were all torn up, plus the ugly green uniforms Lord Granwall had you all wear were atrocious. I swear that man has no taste at all when it comes to style. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, back to the question. Your clothes, I had some personally made for you. The maids will bring them in when you're ready to eat. <laughs> you shouldn't be here because it's inappropriate. You're quite the gentleman, aren't you? <laughs> Did anything happen last night? Please do remember, dear. I am a nobleman's daughter, after all. Do you think I would partake in such scandalous activities? <laughs> There's no need to apologise, I was just messing with you. But to answer your question, no, nothing happened last night. But then again, it's not like I'd tell even if something did happen. <laughs> I know I need to stop teasing him, but he's so cute not to. Hey, relax. I'm just kidding with you, alright? So just stay still and don't try and sit up just yet. You're still a little hazy from the tea you drank last night. So please just calm down and stay in bed until you get your strength back. Can you do that for me? Thank you, dear. What if my father finds out about you staying the night in my room? Well, there's no need for you to worry about that. He won't be back home until noon and the only people who know you're in here are my personal maids and guards. And trust me, not a single one of them would ever think about betraying me. They would know it would be a death sentence for them. Oh, damn, that came off a little too harsh. He's probably still scared of me enough as it is considering I had his last master assassinated. I don't want to frighten him off and risk losing him as my head advisor. Without his counselling and tactical skills, I won't be able to pull off my plans of taking over the neighbouring kingdoms. I need to keep playing the innocent girl act for now until he fools for me. I just 
mean they're not completely loyal to me, so you don't have to worry about any of them telling my father, alright? Anyway, are you starting to feel your strength coming back? You are? That's good. Then, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and step outside to call the maids and have them bring up some food and your new clothes. So just stay in bed till I get back. Excuse me, we would like a breakfast now and also bring the new uniform. Yes, the one I made specifically for my new guest, thank you. I swear most of these people are useless. I hope Alice gets here soon. Well, oh, speak of the devil. Alice, your timing is perfect. I'm glad to have you back. You did an amazing job dealing with Lord Granwall, but there's something else I need you to do. Here, take this. I need you to put this in my father's tea when he comes home. Make sure to only put it in his cup and not the whole pot, alright? If anyone else drinks the tea and gets sick, it would look suspicious, and I don't want that. And don't worry, it won't kill him. It will just make him extremely ill for a couple of days, which will be long enough for me to execute my plans. It will take about three hours before it kicks in, which will be about the same time my father is meeting with Lord Henry, which will be the perfect timing for what I have planned. Also, did you get the other thing I asked for, right? Yes, the wine. Make sure to give it to Lord Henry as a parting gift after my father retires to his bedchambers. I don't want to risk anyone else drinking it. After all, only you and I know it's poison, so make sure you give it to him when he's leaving, and not a second sooner, alright? Good. How will I explain the poisoned wine and Lord Henry's death? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, everyone knows the tea and wine are from Lord Wren, and everyone also knows he's trying to buy back favour from us after my father called him out publicly for overtaxing our people when it came to trading. So it would only make sense that Lord Wren would try to get revenge on our family and our allies, don't you think? <laughs> so most of the blame will be put on him, but our families will also catch some flack for giving poison goods to another noble. Which means I'll need to make an official apology that I'm not looking forward to. Someone like me should never have to bow their heads in apology, but I need to keep up my harmless appearance. Well, at least for now anyways. Just make sure you put that in my father's tea and give Lord Henry the poisoned wine, alright? Good. Oh, and another thing. Please report to me as soon as my father falls ill, alright? Thank you. It looks like the maids have gone preparing breakfast. Anyways, I have to go. I'll let you go back to work. Good day to you too. Yes, that should be fine. Did you bring the clothes I asked for? Good. Come in and set the table. Me and my guests will be eating breakfast in my room. Hello, darling. I'm back. Sorry for taking so long. I had some... well... business I had to take care of. Anyway, you maids, put those clothes on the bed and set the table, then leave us. Thank you, Janice, but I'll pour the tea myself, so there's no need for you to stay. No, really, it's fine, I insist. But thank you anyways. How dumb are these maids? Can't they see I want to be left alone with my darling? Oh, yes, thank you all. Have a nice day. Finally, they've gone. I hate having to act all nice with low-level servants, but I have to keep up my appearances, especially in front of my love. So, dear, how do you like your new clothing? Oh, and also I got you a little gift. Here. What is it? Well, there's only one way to find out. Open it. Do you like it? It's a custom-made pocket watch. It looks expensive. Well, it should, especially considering how much money I paid for it. Well, yes, you can take it. Think of it as an apology for having to spend a week in that hellhole of a cage they had you in. 
and again, I'm sorry about setting you up for, well, you know, the whole Lord Grammel thing. But as I explained earlier, it was the best thing for both of us. Anyways, try on your new uniform. I didn't know your exact measurements, so if anything doesn't fit properly, I'll just have my tailor take care of it. So what are you waiting for? Try it on. Are you sure? I can turn around while you change. I do like his shyness, but would it kill him to be a little less modest when it comes to me? If he just acted the way when the maids were around, that would be the one thing, but him acting like this when we're all alone is a little frustrating, but I'm sure that will change in time. You're done changing now? So it's safe for me and my pure maiden eyes to look at you? <laughs> The look on your face is adorable. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't be teasing you this much. Anyways, are you ready to eat now? I didn't know what you liked, so I had the chefs make a little bit of everything. So go ahead and try anything that looks good. Also, if you want more of anything, then just ask. I'll have maids fetch us some more foods if you like. And don't feel like you're in a rush. Take as long as you want eating. There's nothing going on today. My father will be busy with a meeting with a neighbouring nobleman, so I have the whole day to show you around and get you familiar with the place. After all, you will be living here, so knowing where everything is will be important when you officially start working for me. When do I plan on officially making you my personal head advisor? Later when things die down a little more, but for now just focus on finishing breakfast. You're done eating? Then how about I give you a tour of the garden first? After all, it is where I spend most of my free time and the flowers are just beautiful. Although not as beautiful as you. <laughs> There's no need to blush. You truly are more beautiful than any flower that I've ever seen. No, I said I would try to stop teasing you, but I never said I would completely stop teasing you. <laughs> After all, it is just too fun. <laughs> Anyways, so shall we be off? The walk to the garden isn't too far, but I would like to take this time to get to know each other better. I know the name of the village you're from, but I don't know much about it besides the fact that Lord Gramwell attacked it. What was it like before that? It was a peaceful village, but aren't your people known for being brave warriors? I remember hearing stories about your people as a child, about all the great beasts your tribe would slay and how your people were the only ones keeping the monsters away from all the nearby villages. Is that true or were they all just stories, just rumours passed down to scare children at night? They're true. So did you ever have to kill a monster? You did? Well, what kind? You killed a wyvern? How did that happen? You were looking for herbs alone when it attacked you? So you're saying you killed it by yourself without any help? How old were you when that happened? That young? If it wasn't for my divine blessing, I would swear you were lying, but I can see it in your eyes you're telling the truth. So it looks like you're just as dangerous as you are handsome. He's cute when he blushes. Anyways, we're here. So, what do you think of the garden? It's quite nice, isn't it? These cherry blossoms are my favourite. They remind me of my mother, but talking about that can wait for another time. So, what's your favourite flower? Roses? Well, they are beautiful. What's this? Oh, hey Alice, what are you doing here? What do you mean my father is sick? Where is he? In his chambers? I need to go see him at once. I'm so sorry dear, our tour has to wait. Please go with Alice, she'll show you your new living quarters while I check on my father. He's so kind worrying about me and my father like this, but that's another reason I love him. 
No, I'll be fine on my own. Just go with Alice and let me deal with my father. I'll check in on you later after I see my father, alright? I'll see you later tonight, dear. Everything seems to be coming together perfectly. There's just a couple more things I need to take care of. Then everything will be mine. <laughs>